Lamar Jackson made his triumphant return to Baltimore Ravens OTAs on Tuesday, and his impact was felt in a big way. We talk about that and so much more coming up next year on this episode of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire, here with you on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Thank you so much, as always, for being here and making Locked On Ravens your first listen each and every single day. We're free and available on all podcasting platforms, so that includes in video form on YouTube and audio form wherever you get your shows. We're five days a week here, plus bonus content also. Monday through Friday is a regular show, 6 a.m. Eastern time. We have Ravens news, analysis, updates, and so much more for you on this Baltimore Ravens team. Today's episode of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time at Creighton account. Use code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. The Ravens kicked off week three, the final week, actually, of OTA. It's crazy. Seems like OTA started yesterday. Also seems like they started like three months ago. Feels like it started forever ago and not so long ago. But this is the last week of voluntary OTAs. The Ravens will kick off mandatory minicamp next week. Then we'll go into a bit of a low period, at least workout-wise, till we get to training camp in July. So opportunities for guys to go out there, get in work with the coaches, with their teammates. And the big storyline has been, well, Lamar Jackson showed up to that first week for one day there and then hadn't showed up since. Well, on Tuesday, Lamar Jackson made his triumphant return to the field. We've been talking about it forever here on this show. feels like there was just more and more and more going into him not being there. Well, we can now put that all to bed. Lamar made a return and the impact was felt. We'll talk about what Nelson Aguilar had to say about Lamar. He gave a really great quote and just a story in general about Lamar, which we're going to talk about and what makes him special, as Nelson Aguilar said. Then we'll get into some updates for OTAs and what has gone on, particularly from yesterday. The rookie class continues to impress and other updates about vets, third-year guys, fourth-year guys, etc., second-year guys even as well, which is going to be really important for Baltimore moving forward. So let's talk about Lamar Jackson. The video comes out right as practice starts of him making his way back onto the field. And I mean, <laughs> I know for a lot of people, it's probably just like a fine, like, oh, we can just finally stop talking about this whole narrative because it feels like a lot of people miss OTAs, quarterbacks, they miss OTAs sometimes. It's their decision, it's voluntary. We're not going to get into that whole conversation again. We had it honestly probably way too often just because there were so many things stacking on top of it. But it just felt like there was a spotlight, as there always has been, on Lamar Jackson for that decision. Very briefly, my stance was I would love for him to be there, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fault him for not being at something that is voluntary, especially considering that he was doing work down with Zay Flowers and all these other guys. So not like he was staying and just doing nothing. But Lamar made his return, and what Nelson Aguilar had to say about Lamar, I think it hit home for a lot of people in terms of just what makes Lamar Jackson so special. So he gave a quote about Lamar Jackson being cerebral. He said, quote, people don't realize how cerebral Lamar Jackson is. The conversations he has with you one-on-one, about what he sees and what you may see. And then he wanted to tell a story about how he ran a route in OTAs yesterday and he cut in, or there there was this cut and there was a miscommunication between him and Lamar. And the, the my favorite part of this entire story, the, my favorite part of the quote, is he said, I came back to the sideline and I was better because of it. That's essentially what he said, where Lamar was walking him through this and saying, well, look, if I throw it here, the defender can't get there if you cut at this certain point. So Nelson Aguilar thought, all right, I'm going to do this one thing. Lamar was on a different page. And this is this is the value of being at OTAs where I do think that, yes, it is valuable for players to be there, even though it is voluntary. You're able to just get in that work with the teammates where you Nelson Aguilar and Lamar Jackson are now on that same page together. And Aguilar went on and said, that's what makes a special QB special. Lamar has that communication aspect. And Nelson Aguilar, honestly, when the signing was made, Last year, I think there was a lot of frustration from a lot of people about why the Ravens would go that route again. It's another veteran signing. You know, what's this guy going to bring to the table? 
Nelson Aguilar, I think, was the most steady presence in that room last season. Obviously, Zay was the most productive, but I think, look, Zay is a rookie. Nelson Aguilar was the most steadying presence in that room. And there were a lot of times where, you know, even Nelson Aguilar and those Ravens wired, right? We saw him in the huddles, hyping up Lamar, hyping up the wide receivers, you know, calling things out. Seemed like he was always in the right place at the right time. It's really valuable to have someone like that in your wide receiver room. But Lamar's impact, it one, goes beyond just what he can do on the field in terms of his arm and his leg talent. Nelson Aguilar saying Lamar is cerebral. There's a lot that goes into being an NFL quarterback, right? These guys have to process things like no other. It's it's a very quick decision-making process. One read, two read, three read, however many reads you want to go through. Got to decide what you want to do with the football, the placement. There's a lot that goes into being a quarterback. You're essentially, you know, you are the most important part of the football team. And for Lamar, I think he does have a deep understanding of what has to happen on the football field. And over, I mean, this is year seven for Lamar, which is just absolutely crazy in my opinion. With Lamar, he has gotten a better understanding each year he has been in the league of, all right, this is what it takes to be successful at the NFL level. This is how I can get better at the NFL level. And I think he also works. We talked about Todd Munkin when he was first hired on, about he, how he's able to work with the personnel he's given. I mean, I think that's been the story of Lamar Jackson's career, right? Where, you know, he hasn't had the best wide receiver groups in the league. Arguably, he's had bottom five wide receiver rooms for most of his career, bottom 10 wide receiver rooms for most of his career. No disrespect to those guys, obviously, but, you know, we, we can we can call it like it is. He, they, he didn't have the Stephon Diggs or, you know, any of that type A wide receiver or, you know, he didn't have a Jamar Chase T. Higgins out of the Boyd room, right? He, he didn't have that. So to be able to adapt to the personnel he had, I think that's been very big and a big arc in his career. And it's what has made him successful. And like Nelson Aguilar said, it's what made him special or has made him special. You know, we're talking present, not past. He still is special as a quarterback. But Aguilar telling that story, Lamar coaching up guys, and that's going to be really valuable for the rookies too. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll talk a bit more about what Aguilar had to say in the second part of the show about the rookies and, and his mindset with those guys. But Aguilar stepping into a big role. Lamar Jackson, I think, also understands that his receiver group is a second-year guy in Zay Flowers, a fourth-year guy in Rashad Bateman. Aguilar is your three right now. He's going to be relied upon to get the ball to these guys and get it to them in ways that works for both him and the receiver. And part of that is specializing in knowing your personnel. Right? We talk about know your personnel for a bunch of things, right? for coaches, for obviously players, but for quarterback, it's taken to another level because not only do you have to know the opponent, but you have to know your own personnel in terms of here's the sweet spot for this wide receiver. Here's how this guy likes to be led. I can throw this ball a little bit out because I know this guy is going to go get the ball. Aguilar coming back and getting that quote unquote miscommunication out early. I think that's why to me, for the organization, for everybody who took that stance, Lamar being at OTAs is a really big thing, right? And I will stay true to my stance, which was I'm not going to bash him for not being there because it is voluntary. If it was mandatory, we'd have a different conversation. But I would have loved for him to be there for every single one. He wasn't. Okay, we move on. He's here now. He's back in Baltimore. And the impact, I mean, literally, it, it's getting felt. And that, in my opinion, is it's 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 building blocks, right? It's it's You're building up. Each day you're there. Not that he wasn't doing that when he was working out with Zay in Florida or, you know, working out with all these guys over the off season, not at the facility, but it, it's just, it's just different, especially when you have guys who are there, right? Like when Rashad Bateman shows up, you want Lamar to be there too, to be able to get that chemistry. There's not a ton you can take away from OTAs, right? OTAs, it's not the same atmosphere. It's training camp. I believe the practice yesterday was no helmets, no pads. So again, it's, it's a little different as opposed to what a full training camp practice or obviously game situation is going to be, but it goes beyond that. It's with the connection you have, and that connection is, is going to be built with reps. And so I just, I'm, I'm very happy Lamar is there now. I think a lot of people are, and I, I didn't really hear about you know, maybe we'll hear today about the national media talking about Lamar being back. But, you know, if they're going to talk about him missing all this time and saying, oh, and bashing him, they should probably keep that same energy and say, hey, you know what? He showed up. Look at that. So 
<laughs> it was definitely a triumphant return for Lamar Jackson. And, uh, you know, hopefully he stays for the rest of the time. The Ravens have a couple more days of OTAs before mandatory minicamp kicks off next week. I'd, I'd assume, again, I don't, I don't know, but I'd assume Lamar stays throughout the entire course of this. He's back in Baltimore until minicamp is over. Then he goes back and then comes back with everybody else. So big story of the day yesterday, Lamar Jackson back in Baltimore makes the return to Ravens OTAs. Coming up, though, in the second part of the show, we'll talk a bit about the rookie class. There's been a lot of great reports coming out of Owings Mills about how they've been impressing. We'll talk about that and the mindset the vets have with this rookie class on the team. Stay tuned, plan to talk about on the show. First, the show is brought to you by Game Time. I'm getting really pumped up for the NBA Finals here, and it'd be really cool to go to a game. But Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time map actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. With Carol Aspen deals, all in prices, views, and receipt, and the lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. So over on the Game Time app, the NBA Finals, maybe it goes four games. Maybe there's a sweep. Maybe it goes seven. Game time has it covered. Plus, there are plenty of other high-profile events, especially in the Baltimore area. You got the Orioles. They are on a roll. Plus, you got the Ravens coming up. I know we're still a couple months away, but that is coming up. So if I were to go to a finals game, just talking about that, I'd, I'd love to go to a closeout game. I've been pretty consistent in saying that, but those are hard to predict. So game one, I think, also would be really fun to go, to just the, the opening vibes of that. And the game time app can make that happen for you. The app has a lot of great features. My favorite being the last minute deals on there. You can save six percent off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy theater, and so much more. Plus, the game time app is super easy to use, and the experience is really smooth. Other deals and features they have are flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing, seat views, lowest price guarantee, game time ticket coverage, and so much more. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Down the Game Time app, create an account. Use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off first purchase. Turn to buy again. Create an account. Redeem code Locked On NFL. Spell L O C K D O N NFL for twenty dollars off first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. We're back. Our second segment of Locked On Ravens here on this Wednesday, a little midweek edition here of the show. Kevin Allshaker still talking with you. Really appreciate it again for. Everybody who's tuning in today, making Locked On Ravens a part of your day. Also, be sure to make Locked On Sports today a part of your day. Peter Bukowski does a great job over there bringing you the biggest stories throughout the sports world each and every single day. So, again, Locked On Sports today here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. But let's move into the rookie class for the Ravens. Baltimore is able to secure a pretty good one, in my opinion, especially those first couple of picks. As Baltimore is able to not only get some players who are the best player available on the board at the time, but also you talk about needs-based, and certainly think Baltimore got that. I think we talked about a lot on this show, if you were with me, during the draft preview days leading up to the draft. We were talking a lot about how they needed cornerback depth, they needed offensive linemen, they needed edge rushers, and they needed some wide receivers in there. Their first four picks of this draft, corner, offensive line, edge, wide receiver. So... Four needs, four check marks for the Ravens in those first four picks. But now we're at OTAs, and again, there's there's only so much you can take away from OTAs, but the rookie class has been impressing. And from yesterday, Jonas Schaefer of the Baltimore Banner, shout out to him for this. Rookies were impressing. You have Devontae Walker being the star of the show yesterday. Jonas saying he had his best day of practice and the splashiest day of any rookie yet, perhaps. Late in practice, Jonas says, in a competitive 11-on-11, the fourth round pick, he won on a vertical route, then a left sideline security catch him on drafts of rookie quarterback Emory Jones for a touchdown. And then Walker had a twisting, toe tapping, back shoulder catch for another big gain down the left sideline. Now, I believe these were both on TJ Tampa, who was the Ravens. Well, both of those guys were fourth round picks of Baltimore. But then Tampa got the best of Tez Walker on a rep, too. So it's it's the iron sharpens iron. This is what you get in OTAs, where it's the or it's the competition before the competition, essentially, right? Where those guys are going to be going up against each other a lot in camp, I assume. And Tess Walker had good reps. TJ Tampa has some good reps, too. So, to me, it's really encouraging, especially for guys. You know, you talk about the impact, right? Nate Wiggins is always going to be talked about. Roger Rosengarten, just because of, oh, those are the high draft picks. Those are the day one, day two selections. The day three selections have been so key for the Ravens over the course of their franchise history. Whether you want to talk about fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh round guys, Tez Walker, while he's not going to be the number one receiver on this team, I still expect him to have some sort of a role. DJ Tampa is really valuable corner depth, and with the way the corner position has gone for Baltimore, hopefully I reverse jinx this, but 
you know, Baltimore's had a lot of corner injuries, so the reverse jinx of that would hopefully be maybe they'll have no corner injuries, but Tampa is ready in case of an emergency, or if he maybe shows out in camp, there could be a smaller role for him. But then you have guys like Sanusi Kane, Baltimore's seventh round pick, a safety. Now, he lined up primarily with and against the team's reserves, which is expected. But Jonas said he had a second interception in as many practices, and he also had a nice return on that. So two interceptions in two days for Sanusi Kane, and he's certainly in the mix for snaps as that third safety, as Jonas mentions here. That's encouraging for me. The way that this Ravens roster is constructed, you know, we can even talk about guys like like Nate Wiggins and others. They're going to have to rely on this rookie class to at least give them something this year outside of their first round pick. I'd assume Roger Rosengarden wins that starting right tackle job, but we're not going to know till training camp and the roster is finally set and those starting jobs are locked up. But last year, you got production from Zay Flowers, right? He was your most valuable rookie. It's, it's not even a question. Tavius Robinson had a much bigger role than I thought he was going to. So shout out Tavius Robinson. He, he's also looking like he's in line for a breakout year this year. But other than that, they really didn't have anybody in that rookie class who gave them consistent production. They're going to need more than that this season because they've lost so many vets. And not every single vet they lost, and in fact, I'd argue most vets they lost, were not crippling losses. There were a few, right? And we can we can go, we'll go over that. We have gone over that. But for me, it's going to be so important to get guys like Tez Walker some snaps, right? Get guys like, even if Sanusi Kane and the Ravens don't add another safety, Sanusi Kane is going to be their third safety or in that, in that mix. I shouldn't say he will be. Actually, we've heard our Darius Washington could be in that mix, which is something that we talked about. So get, be, you should be an everyday here on Lockdown Ravens because we had floated our Darius Washington's name as a safety for this team and saying, hey, you know what? I know Baltimore's kind of moved him into a slot role, but – they just don't have safety depth. Washington was a great safety at TCU. Maybe he could move back there, and it feels like Baltimore, maybe that is where Ardarius Washington is going to play. But it's going to be really important for Baltimore to get production not only out of the rookie class, but we've talked about it, second-year guys, third-year guys, fourth-year guys. The vets that came in last season, they did a great job. Eric DeCosta did a phenomenal job at bringing in plug-and-play guys who were able to either resurrect their careers, have career years, bounce back in a big way. But it doesn't feel like that's what Baltimore is doing this year. You know, maybe we'll see one or two signings before the start of training camp or before the start of the season. Wouldn't be shocked if that's what happens, honestly. But Baltimore is going through a bit of a youth movement right now. And there are multiple reasons for that. Part of it is just you can't pay everybody. And Baltimore has done a pretty good job drafting over these last however many years you want to go back. And you can't, you can't keep everybody if you draft the way that you do if you're Baltimore. And that is you find value in all three days of the draft. The other part of it is Lamar Jackson is now on a massive quarterback contract. You're starting to have to pay other guys as well. So there's just not a ton of money to go around here. And part of that is, all right, you have to be conscious of that and say, yes, you can bring in vets, but you also have to draft succession plans. Having guys on four-year rookie deals, five-year rookie deals, that's really valuable for a team who has their quarterback on the deal that Baltimore has Lamar Jackson on right now and is also paying a bunch of you know $100 million contracts, big money to other players not named Lamar Jackson. So it's nice to see, and even, even with guys like Nate Wiggins, right, we can see Jonas reporting here that Nate Wiggins has gained a little weight. So he was listed around 185 pounds, on the Clemson Tigers roster last season and Ravens officials, Jonas says here, they expect him to add some size in their strength and conditioning program. I think we're not going to see the full results of that until year two for Nate Wiggins, but they can get him as close as they can get him this year. And then what I think, you know, we talk about like transformation pictures from guys coming in from one year to the next book it. Now I think Nate Wiggins, his transformation picture from year one to year two, Everybody's going to be going crazy about it. I'm talking June 5th, 2024 right now. I predict when Nate Wiggins comes back for that second season, that first picture we see of, oh, Nate Wiggins has been away. Nate Wiggins has been working. We'll see a clear cut transformation from him there. So the, the Ravens, I think they love, they're in love with the speed, right? That is what makes Nate Wiggins, Nate Wiggins. But we've, we've heard about Nate having some good reps. Roger Rosengarten looked good with his feet. His foot speed is incredible. So seems like right now the rookie class is already putting on a great impression. 
They're having good reps. They're putting together good practices. And that to me is a very encouraging sign, especially considering the youth movement Baltimore is on right now. But coming up, we'll move away from the rookies. We'll talk a bit about some OTA updates. So be sure to stay tuned, plan to talk about here on Lockdown Ravens. First, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And this next segment is brought to us by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest, big or small, certain things and really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased in your life. So today, I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing this week. And I've been kind of thinking about the Jamal Adams visit for the Ravens and the whole safety depth conversation. We've had it here on this show, but I do feel very strongly that Baltimore should bring in some level of safety depth. We talked about Jamal Adams' skill set and, you know, my way maybe they should be going after a different skill set there. But I'm, I'm just worried if you're relying on a bunch of young, unproven guys in that safety room with Marcus Williams, that injury history, it just it, it concerns me because part of the reason their defense, Baltimore's defense was so good last year was because Geno Stone stepped in pretty seamlessly there for Marcus Williams. But Therapy can be different for everybody. Most of us have bigger problems on our favorite sports team, and it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. We're back. Our final segment of Locked on Ravens. Kevin Ostriker still talking with you here on this Wednesday. Again, really appreciate everybody for tuning in today on Locked on Ravens. Be sure to subscribe and follow along in video form and audio form. It's the same show either way. So if you want to watch one day, listen another day, you can do that. And you're not missing out on any content. If you're an every day, you've been with me every single day here. Really appreciate you continuing to make time for me here on Locked on Ravens and continuing to tune in. If it's your first time into the show, welcome in. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. If you're somewhere in the middle, welcome back to the show. Been doing this for almost five years now. My five year anniversary coming up in August, actually. It's funny, my second ever episode of the show. If you will do a huge throwback right here. Actually, no, it was my first. It was literally my first. My first episode of the show was Kari Vedvik. We did a Kari Vedvik episode, is my first ever episode of Locked On Ravens. Which, by the way, it's it, I, I've, I've improved. I like to say at least I've improved as a podcaster since then. Uh, I've learned how to use my voice a little better since then, considering I literally came into this thing fresh, had no experience. So it's been a crazy journey, and I can't wait to keep going on the show. So again, appreciate all the support, video form, audio form, social media has been great, subtext as well. So again, can't thank everybody enough for the support. But one more thing, I, I said we were done with the rookies. I forgot to mention Nelson Aguilar's quote that I was going to mention in the second part of the show. I just, whew, I'm, I'm all over the place. So I want to talk about that quote from Nelson Aguilar, and then we'll get into the rest of the updates from OTA. So Nelson Aguilar said he had a plan for rookies, Nate Wiggins and TJ Tampa. So he said, first thing I do is I truly want to make them feel comfortable in terms of I'm happier here. That's because they'll make us a better football team. And then when we compete, if I get even one little bit on them, I'll let them know so that they feel like, man, I'm not going to let this old head. It's, it's a good thing. It's my job as an older guy to be present and alive when I go against them. I can't relax and also share some information I know of other corners I've gone against. I mean, that if that is not a vet answer, I, I really don't know what is. I mean, this is hearing him say this and just how Nelson Aguilar carries himself. He understands the role that he's in. But this is, I mean, this is the perfect plan. I mean, I, I love this answer from Nelson Aguilar because, yes, the most important part is to say, hey, you know what? Welcome to the team. Congratulations. We're happy you're here. Let's go out there and let's do this thing. But then it is kind of, you know, we talk about and we've heard stories. You know, I've talked with, you know, Ronnie Stanley, a bunch of other guys about, oh, what's your welcome to the NFL moment? Like, when when did you have that? Well, I mean, it could even be in practice, right? We've heard a lot of stories where, yeah, welcome to the NFL moment. Maybe for Nate Wiggins and GJ Tampa – Welcome to the NFL is, oh, Nelson Aguilar got me so bad one practice. And I'm just like, okay, I'm here. Like, maybe that's a story. So once you get to the competing part, the competition part of this whole thing, it does. It's it's a little chip on their shoulder of like, man, all right, this is really what it's like. And gives them the motivation to say, yeah, I'm not going to let this guy do this to me. This is crazy, which is great. And plus him sharing the information of other corners he's gone against. I mean, that's it's, it's a step ahead, right? Getting your guys – you help them. They help you. We talk about iron sharpens iron, but even if it's a little advice here and there, a weakness, a first step, something like, like any information 
is so valuable and could be the difference between a win or a loss, a catcher, an incompletion, a touchdown, and a two-yard gain. I mean, there are so many different reasons why what Nelson Aguilar said, I mean, it, it was perfect. I, I absolutely loved it. So shout out to Nelson Aguilar. I think, you know, with Lamar coming back to OTAs, that was the big story. But Nelson Aguilar, a lot of people, I think, have changed their tune on what Nelson Aguilar has been to this team and what he could be. Had a great year last season, circumstantially, and I think he's in for another great one this year as well. So let's get into the other updates from OTAs yesterday, not rookie updates. Lamar Jackson, let's start with him. He missed first two throws in a red zone period. He had a manageable sideline throw to Zay Flowers and then a tough red zone throw to wide receiver Blake Cunningham, not quarterback Blake Cunningham, who, by the way, Jonas says, was well covered by safety or Darius Washington. So just to keep our Darius Washington's name in everybody's minds. But Lamar then nailed Zay Flowers on an over-the-shoulder ball just for the wideout round out of space in one corner of the end zone. So they were able to connect on a pretty spectacular throw-and-catch combination. But it was Ronnie Stanley who stole the show, not for the reason you might think. Brent Urban batted down a pass. Where have you heard that before? He does it all the time. But Brent Urban batted down a pass, and, and actually the ball fell into the hands of Ronnie Stanley, who hit – the ball down into Stanley's hand. Stanley ends up running with it and spin move, you know, runs in the open field and everybody loved it. Almost, you know, it almost sounds like Tyree Phillips esque. If you remember that play against the Jaguars seems like all those years ago, kind of was now all those years ago. So shout out Ronnie Stanley. Actually, when I talked, I did an interview with Ronnie back in, oh, was it 20, I guess 2021 now, maybe, maybe 2022 it was a couple years ago. And I had asked him because that was right after Baltimore lost to the Dolphins on Thursday night when Robert Hunt had that score. And I asked him, I said, is it your dream to go out there and score a touchdown? He said, oh, yeah, that's every offensive lineman's dream. So I am still very much on the team Ronnie Stanley touchdown train. I, I really do hope he gets one one day. Now, something that Jonas said about Malik Cunningham he had a couple nice catches, including a full extension grab near the sideline. So I don't know if there's a roster spot for Malik Cunningham. Well, I don't know if this, I don't know if this is a bold prediction or a hot take or something. I don't, I don't think Tyler Wallace's spot is safe on the roster. I think Baltimore has five wideouts right now who are safe. And obviously that Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Nelson Aguilar, Deontay Hardy, and Tez Walker. I think if someone beats Tyler Wallace out, they will make the team over Tyler Wallace, right? Tyler has value on special teams, but in my opinion, I think if someone like Malik Cunningham or Kadir Esmael or someone along those lines goes out there and performs, I like Tylen a lot. I think he has potential. I also think he hasn't really gotten a fair shot in terms of being on the field as a wide receiver. It's almost like what James Perche had, although James Perche didn't necessarily take super advantage of his opportunities. But regardless, we haven't really seen we haven't seen Tylen in a spot like that. So I'm curious to see what the Ravens do with Tylen in this training camp and, and how they end up using him. Now, in terms of a few other quick things, the Ravens are using a new drill and doing red zone sessions early in practice. All four quarterbacks took shotgun snaps and team personnel simultaneously before dropping back and throwing the one of four designated receivers. And that's where Todd Monken is able to cycle from one player to another, offer pointers on positioning, which again is a really key part of these workouts, whether it is OTAs, mini camp, training camp, just where to be situationally, how to do this. That's a big part of it. Trenton Simpson has already impressed first year linebackers coach Mark DeLeon, which again, they're going to be relying on him in a huge way after Patrick Queen's departure. And that's going to be big as well. So the Ravens will be back on the practice field today for OTAs. Of course, we'll get into the storylines from that on tomorrow's show. But again, we're just we're checking off those boxes, right? Getting closer and closer to the start of the 2024 season. It's crazy. OTAs are going to, again, be over after this week. And then we'll get into mandatory minicamp before training camp starts up next month. That's all I have for you here today, though, on Locked on Ravens. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Coming up tomorrow, we'll be back right here. More Ravens content and talk for you. So stay tuned. I'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens.